Okay, this is If These Walls Could Speak, the cover done by Sean Colvin. It is Capo 5 according to my calculations on the recording, so Capo 5 will put you in tune with them. I'm just going to play it and then we'll talk about it. It's going to start your first chord as a C, traditional, regular C, but there's a little riff that goes. So it's a fifth string open, hammer on the second fret, so here we go. Try and do it a little faster. Notice my third chord is a D, but it's actually a D sus nine because my middle finger isn't down yet. I'm using fingers, you actually could use a pick with this. Oops. Later on in the song, there's going to be a part where you do want to use fingers, so I'll probably stick with the fingers. So, one more time and we'll talk about it. If these old walls, if these old walls could speak. Not a good key for my singing, but you get the idea. If you notice on the chart, if you're looking at the chart, I did take time to write down strum lines because it's kind of a tricky song that way. Very odd measure lengths. Again, not hard, just tricky. I did work hard to put the chords over the words that when you sing, that's where the chord goes. That should help. Let me digress to the intro a little bit again. So it's the fifth string open, hammered on to the fifth string second and then the fourth string open. And then C, G. Also notice I'm doing more of the traditional G. Usually I like this G, because usually I'm doing this C. The C2, the C add nine. And you can see those go together really well. Because of the traditional C, this G feels a little better to me. You might even fret it this way. I find that awkward with those three fingers, but that would make sense in this case. So yeah, after that part, it's just the chords, and it's real tricky where there's just one strum of C. That's why there's no strum lines after it. If these old walls, two, three, four. Because remember that the chord name stands for one strum, and then every strum line stands for a strum. And I'm not doing a lot with the strum pattern. Almost straight downs sound pretty good to me. If these old walls, maybe a little da-da-da now and then. If these old walls could speak, self-explanatory at that point. It's going to do the intro a couple more times. Um, after the chorus, actually, at the bottom of the first page, it kind of does the... Um, they would tell you that it's only... That I have a stubborn streak, two, three, four. If these old walls could speak... That intro again and then 
and yes, just another verse, another chorus. Pretty self-explanatory there. At the bottom of the second page, I did write down uh, the chords I thought you might not know or remember. A9 over C sharp. Its name is a lot worse than the chord. You might remember a C chord where we don't use our index finger. It's called a C major 7. Real pretty. The A9 over C sharp is just like that, except the third finger comes up one fret. And I have a hard time spreading those two fingers, so I'm going to have my first finger take over so my third finger can move up. So now I've got my third finger on the fifth string fourth fret and the first finger on the fourth string second fret. So that's the A9 over C sharp. Again, not hard, just hard to remember. And maybe a little hard to get there. The G over B, I went back to my two finger G. I like this voicing, the G over B. Just remember, try not to strum that low string on the G over B. And then the D sus9 we already kind of talked about. It's just a D chord without your middle finger. And you do make it a D at the very end when you add that middle finger. Now the very end has something interesting. Uh, the very last line of tab in the song. Let me just play it and we'll talk about it. Basically, it's like a C chord, but you're not using your third finger. This is the part where I think finger picking, I guess it's not still not required, but it makes more sense to me. A uh, pick would certainly be fine. I'm going like this. Just hitting the fourth string, third string, second string. Then I hit the two again and slide up to a four. And my first finger comes along for the ride really cool, kind of crazy sounding chord. So it's and pretty much the same thing, two frets higher, but they do a nice slide to get up there. Oops. Then there's a little half step slide from the fourth to the fifth fret. I did a little bit of uh, magic there. Basically I have my third finger take the fifth fret. So here it's 4th fret, 3rd string open, 2nd string 3rd, but then when this finger comes up a half step, my 3rd finger takes over on that 5th fret. So here's the riff one more time. You might see on the chart there it's written after that last 5, it's a hold. going back to that C shape and he or she just goes and it resolves with a G. So here's the very end. I'm going to try and play with the whole song. Um, let's see what kind of volume we got here. See if this works. I'm gonna jam with Sean. Here we go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Here we go.
idea so here's the in outro again I think that covers most everything on that song um, hope you enjoy it. Always remember, if that's not a good singing key for you, you can move the capo wherever you want, and all the frets and chords just move correspondingly. Beautiful tune. Enjoy. Enjoy.